Hey all, Rusty RV TV, welcome. Check it out. We're leaving the game store. I thought we'd take a little ride through the desert. Gonna head up to a little town called Bouse, Bouse, Arizona. And happy 2024. Unbelievable. Made it another year. That's a good thing, isn't it? This is Maine and Central. We're going to head straight north. Go up here to Plumosa Road. Then head over to Bows. It's about not quite 30 miles to get over there. Stop and do a little sightseeing. Some historic, very historic places along uh, Plumosa Road. We are still enjoying this 60 degree weather, 40s at night. But a cool down is coming, they said, long range in January. Okay, right here is Plamosa Road. If you followed me in my videos, this is probably one of my favorite dispersed camping areas out here. Plumosa Road, you can camp all the way over to Bows. Wide open, flat, your ways out of town, good cell reception. Uh, just a neat place. I like it. And right here in this section, we're just passing the four mile mark. Right here you'll see signs that ends the dispersed camping, but it picks up once we get over on the other side of those mountains. Right there's your signs, day use only. First stop, I haven't done this in a while, so first stop we're going to stop at the Quartzite Rock Sign. What started this, I got a email from some folks that said, hey, we're bored. You're bored? Well, there are things to do around Quartzite. You have to get out of town a little bit, but you can make an entire day, a couple days, on a trip like this. So right up here to the left should be a dirt road. Go figure, a dirt road in a desert. <laughs> Actually, off to the right, that's uh, part of the Arizona Peace Trail. Okay, right here to the left, this is it. It's an old historic rock sign that used to guide aviators way back in the 30s. So we'll stop and check that first. Here it is, it's all fenced off and protected. This is a historic site. Pretty cool they saved it. All right, go for a little walk. I'm trying a new camera. This is the Insta360 Ace Pro. It's supposed to be a little better than a GoPro, so we're going to check it out today. You're going to be the determining factor in the quality of this footage right here. <laughs>
Here it is. These rocks were laid out in precision. Long time ago. This used to guide way before they had air traffic controllers and all that. Planes to the airstrip and quartzite. There's also another one of these up near Vicksburg, which is behind Brenda off Highway 60. They're around. When I was in uh, drone school back in 2020, I sent pictures of this to the school, and they said this is probably one of the best kept ones they've seen. Volunteers will come out and keep them in good shape. But it is very precise. They got arrows that will direct uh, the plane straight towards quartzite. And also they got a due north marker. We'll find it. But I mean just out here in the middle of nothing. I think a few years ago they even painted the rocks. Fades out. Sun bleaches out everything here in the desert. Big old Z in the quartzite. So there are things to do and see, especially if you have four wheel, four wheel drive or uh, buggies, whatever. Even part of the peace trail. You can see how tightly packed the rocks are. They don't wash or anything. Pretty cool, huh? There's an arrow that points straight at Quartzite. Quartzite had a uh, airfield during World War II. So this is close to a hundred years old. Pretty amazing. And here's your due north marker. So that was the old time compass from the air. Imagine back in them days, because uh, them planes, they flew low. They didn't fly high in the air. Oh, air mail and all that. Isn't it just flat as a pancake out here? <laughs> There's your desert. That's looking straight off towards town. There's Plumosa Road. That dirt trail road there, that's part of the Peace Trail, Arizona Peace Trail. 700 miles, you'd go all the way around the state. Clear from Yuma up to uh, Kingman. All the way up, then all the way back down. Incredible. A lot of mining history here, up in these mountains. Here's your desert in the winter time. Let's keep on trucking. First stop, 
done. Next stop, how about some old and tagly as Baus Fisherman and Tagley as they're only about four miles up the road here. There's a lot of washes out here that flood this road will flood out. Like this one right here. That's why they don't allow camping, I think. But you can definitely four wheel. There are trails everywhere. Hundreds and hundreds of miles. Okay, we're looking for a little pull out. Do this wash. Here it is. It's not very well marked. There's a tiny sign, or used to be. It's been at least two, three years since I've been out here. And here's the little sign blow this closed area talks about the site how they're saving it that one right there but it's called the Baus Fisherman and Taglia you know I just showed the quartzite and Taglias a couple weeks ago there's also a big set over in Blythe they're all kind of connected According to the historians. But these things are weird. I mean, every time I come out and look at them, the only good way to look at them is from the air. And now they claim they're 1,000 to 5,000 years old. Well, you think about it. How'd they see them back then? This is a pretty area to come out in the spring, too. Sometimes you'll catch some uh, spring bloom, some flowers. Wow, those uh, cactus, they're really burned up. Looks like they got a little new life growing at the base. Lack of rain. Wonder if we'll have all them storms like we did uh, last season. All right, here's the marker form. All the people that donated for the sign. Mouse fisherman and taglias. There's your fisherman with a couple fish in the water. We'll see it here in just a minute. We're going to walk back there. It's a little bit of a walk. You cannot bring uh, vehicles back here. Which is a good thing. It's all protected. Here they are. They're about the same size as the ones in quartzite. Oh no, it's probably just me, my opinion. But these things just amaze me. And once again, we're only less than 20 miles from quartzite. You can come out and see these things. Here's their official sign, marker form. There you can see the fisherman with the spear, the fish, the water, and the sun. Ancient desert artwork is what I call it. 
that has stood the test of time. Then when you look at the terrain around here, there's that parking area. There's your Plumosa Road. The mountains. I mean, there's absolutely nothing around here. Next up, Quinn Pass, about three miles up the road. Keep on trucking. Then once you get over on the other side of the pass here, it opens back up all dispersed camping. You'll see it on our way to Bows. Yay, made it. There's places to pull in here. Now there are off-road trails you can take through here too. Go for a little walk. Feels good to be out of that van a little bit. Oh man, look at that. Someone out here shooting a shotgun didn't even pick up their shells. Target shooting or whatever. Life in the desert. There's a historic sign down by the road. We'll see it before we leave. But a guy back in the late 1800s dug a cistern. Used to catch water for miners, stagecoach, all kinds of activities through uh, the late 1800s here. Travelers would come through and that was one of their only water sources. Hey, there's that white van again. Van's doing good. So what do you think of the quality of this uh, camera I'm holding in my hand here while we're filming the ground footage? It's called the Insta360 Ace Pro. I need to get a better microphone for it, but I, I'm kind of liking the footage so far. Nice and clear. Okay, here's that uh, historic sign.
Thomas Quinn, born in 1869 in New Jersey. Had a mine, dug a cistern to catch water. He had a house here. Then he moved in the bouse after old age forced him to. So a lot of travelers passed through here. All forgotten history now, huh? Except for this sign. Pretty cool. Once again, another thing to do, see. Especially if you're out four wheeling. Doesn't that look cool? Almost looks like Mars. <laughs> All those rock formations, the mountains, this honeycombed with mines. All over in there. You can see all the dirt trails for four wheeling. So, start off the new year right, 2024, get out here and check out the desert. Alright, let's head on into town. We still got another 10 miles into Baus. Now this side here of the pass, once you get up here just a little bit farther, is all dispersed 14 day free camping. And to me, <laughs> this is probably one of the best camping areas around the whole area. You are a little ways from town, you're actually equal distance to Parker so you could do your shopping up in Parker instead of Quartzsite but if for four wheeling you always see toy haulers out here and it, anymore with solar Starlink and all that you're set absolutely set 14 day free camping and this is still part of Plumosa Road all of it I clocked it a few years back. I think it's almost a 12 mile stretch on both sides of the road. And you can get back quite a ways. Here's a couple rigs pretty close to the highway. Then right up here on the right, one good thing about if you're dispersed camping out here is, is the Baus uh, County Park. They got a little RV park here with, uh, you can pick up water, sewer dump, all kinds of stuff. So uh, you don't have to go very far at all. It is fee based, you know, to use their facilities. If you want hookups, you can actually just camp right here. I knew a guy for years that stayed right here at uh, Bows Community Park. County Park, I guess it is. It's run by the county. La Paz County.
Baus, right here's the town. Baus was a huge, massive military base for tanks. General Patton. We're going to stop. Well, they got um, memorials and a cool little museum right in town. But when you run around the desert, you'll see tank tracks still left in the desert. Ton of history here. But right there is town itself. That's Highway 72 that runs through Bow, so it'll take you all the way down to Vicksburg, all the way down to I-10, also into Salome, Highway 60. Then the other direction takes you up into Parker, Arizona, and the Colorado River. Let's cruise on in town, but also, but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's another historic site right before we get into town. See if I can't find it. Here it is. Old Homestead. Thomas Baus was born here. Town's named after him. Moved here from California, 1889. He was a prospector, ran a small store, raised his family. He was bitten by a rattlesnake. He passed away in 1929. And he's buried here. Looks like his wife moved back to Los Angeles. But there's remnants of an old swimming pool here. Concrete swimming pool. Still standing. So this be what, 120 years old? Somewhere around there. They were probably popular back in them days. I had a pool in the heat, brutal heat here in the desert. Wow, look at that old tree. Still see remnants of all that rain from a week or so ago. We're standing right in a wash here. Water's got to roar through here. Well, what do you say? Let's head on into town. There's a few hundred people that live here. There's residential homes. A lot of snowbirders, you know, snowbirds come down. There's RV parks here. Grocery store, dollar store. A couple little restaurants and a bar. They have a little library. Should be right up here on the left. Yep, right there. Little library. They probably got Wi-Fi in there. It's kind of a neat little desert town. On a very busy road. Truckers love this road. It's a cut through. From I-40 all the way down to I-10. Alright, we're going to make a right. 
and then immediate left. This is called Monument Row. A lot of dedication to the military base that was here and all the people that served and all the tanks that were here training. There's a massive training for tanks. Every year they have ceremonies here in honor of the veterans. A lot of families come back to honor their family that served here. And that donkey, <laughs> eight ball, he's supposed to be famous. He was kind of the mascot of the camp. Yeah, one thing this base was famous for, they invented back in World War II a massive light and it was never used in war. It was supposed to blind the enemy that was mounted on a tank and the war ended before they ever implemented it in there. So the security here I guess was through the roof. <whistles> So it's a pretty cool stop, all these uh, honor different uh, tank divisions that served here, that went to war. is just a lot of different plaques, memorials, all of it right here. And eight ball, the famous donkey. <laughs> I think over at the museum they got more about eight ball. Once again it's called Monument Row. Right here at Camp Bouse. Amazing how time changes through the years, huh? Old painted sign. Been there forever. As long as I can remember coming out here. There you go. There's your tank. I like pulling the RV park with that thing, huh? <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, what do you say? We'll run over the museum. This highway is busy. Of course, it, we're getting into the busiest time here. All these areas in January just explode. January and February, all the big shows are getting ready to amp up. Rockin' Jam starts January 5th. Big Tent starts, I think, on the 20th. Quartzite RV Show. All right, back here just about a block is the Little Baus Museum. It's small but very cool, very well done. This one. 
It was called the Alaska Hotel, the foundation that we're standing on it right here. Nice little benches, you can come here and sit, relax. A little picnic table. Bring you a little lunch. What do we got here? Oh, old mining equipment. Mining was huge. Still is, kinda. Ball mill system for crushing ore. But that was noisy. Post office is right back there, too. Drill press. Old time thing. Looks like an old wooden wheel. Well Machine and Supply Company. And it looks like an old cabin. Fire hose cart. So if you had a fire, that's what came to put it out right there. Times have changed, haven't they? This is all history. And see what, what they have in here. The way they used to live. Pretty good they can preserve this in this kind of heat here in the summer. Old time stove, table. Pretty good. All right, this is our Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center, and it is open. We'll go inside. Oh, look at this. The history of 8-Ball. <laughs> 8-Ball was a morale officer. He was their drinking buddy while on duty. He drank our beer. Then he came to an untimely end by the colonel. Oh, my. <laughs> Well, thank you for your service, 8-Ball. <laughs> hey, a mini tank. That's cool. And this was the old assay office, huh? 1902. Well, what do you say? You want to go on in? Hey, this is their Chamber of Commerce. Get all the brochures about local stuff around here. Cool old signs. Looks like some of the local geology stuff. Rocks. Neat old wood cabinet, huh? That's an old timer. Oh, there's a picture of that old uh, Alaska hotel. That was small, huh? Two-story, though. And pictures, info on Camp Baus, the tanks. Good old eight ball again. <laughs> Famous donkey. <laughs> There's a guy riding him. He was a drinking buddy. <laughs> Newspaper articles. All history. Very proud history.
Well, I'm glad I came out this way today. And thanks for the email. You know, if you're bored around Quartzsite, there's all kinds of cool places within less than 30, 40 miles. You could actually come out here on Plumosa Road, camp on uh, this side of the pass, do some four-wheeling. If you don't have four-wheeling, come and explore all the historic sites like the Intaglias, the Rock Sign, Quinn's Pass, the old uh, concrete swimming pool, museum, the monument wall, all of it. And there are restaurants here, little road runner food market. You got the county park, so you can pretty much get what you need here for supplies. So we'll make this a mission in January. I'll show some of the outlying areas, just not quartzite. We'll uh, explore around the area a little bit maybe like a 50 mile radius this season. Do a little sightseeing in the desert, why not? Well, head back towards town. Hopefully this weather stays for a while. They say uh, chance of some clouds rolling through, a little bit of rain, and it's gonna cool off, but that's typical desert. Winter time in the desert. Don't forget, Rock and Gem Show starts January 5th. I'm going to be around. Hope to see you down there around the game store. Talk soon.